Hey folks, how you doing? Dave McRae here. Check out this shirt. That's right folks, Daffy Duck, baby! Daffy Duck is my absolute favorite Looney Tunes character. I love Daffy Duck. If I was a duck, I'd be Daffy Duck. My girlfriend gave this to me for my birthday yesterday. I turned the big 39 on May the 24th. So for those of you who did reach out via Facebook, Twitter, or right here on YouTube and wished me a happy birthday, thank you. I really do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so in this video, we're going to be talking about Solo, a Star Wars story, which I saw last night for my birthday. So um, what did I think about it? Well, let me start here, okay? I've always considered myself a big Star Wars fan. And at one point in my life, I considered myself a hardcore Star Wars fan. But in 2018, I don't think I measure up to hardcore Star Wars fan because I think that's changed over the years. I think the bar of what a Star Wars hardcore fan is has changed because the universe has grown. I mean, there's comics and books and cartoons and TV shows and, you know, all these things that I have no interest in. I'm not saying they're not good and I'm not saying if I was to watch them, I wouldn't be entertained and maybe even get into them. I'm not saying that, but I just don't care about it. When I was growing up in the 80s, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate, all we had were the original three movies. That was Star Wars for many years, really. And if you never got into the books, I wasn't a big reader, okay? So if you didn't get into the books, all you had were the movies until 1999 when The Phantom Menace came out. So for me, Star Wars has always been just the movies. That is Star Wars to me. Video games too. I forgot to mention that one. Um, I mean, that Knights of the Old Republic game from like 2002 or three was huge, huge. I had friends that were really into playing. Oh my God, you know, playing it. And I'm just like, I can't get in. I just can't get into it. I play it and this is fun, but I'm not, I'm not, you know. And then, you know, so as the years went on, I started to realize, well, even though I can watch all the movies and recite all the lines before they happen, and I know a lot about the movies and a lot about the symbolism and a lot about this, that, and the other, and I have toys and, and figures and shirts and hats and I'm a Star Wars nut in my own mind. I'm not really a hardcore Star Wars fan in a lot of the minds of many hardcore Star Wars fans in 2018. Did you know that planet section 32 on the planet of Gunga Gaga, there was this little thing? I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You know, well, in the book, Guan to the Stars, there was this ship that landed and he was the, the great uncle, the great uncle of Palpatine's nephew, second cousin's daughter. And there was, and I'm just like, holy shit. Like, that's a amazing. It's amazing. But I'm just like, yeah, I'm out of my, like, I'm way out of my league. Like I'm not a hardcore Star Wars fan. So the reason why I wanted to state all this first is because I think whether you like Solo or not, or what degree you enjoy the film and what degree you don't enjoy the film is really dependent in 2018, what you expect from your Star Wars universe what you expect. It's now becoming very person specific where 35 years ago, everybody pretty much felt the same way about it because it wasn't that big right now. Ooh, I, it, there, there's, yeah, it's really changed. So let me say this. I enjoyed the movie. I don't think it's a great movie, but I think it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. And here's why. I don't know who was expecting this movie to be really intricate and detailed and flushed out and, you know, to expand all this and, you know, like some sort of biopic directed by Clint Eastwood. I mean, this is, I don't know who was expecting that. Let's not forget these same people that are complaining that there's not a lot of substance to this movie and doesn't really expand the character all that much were the same people, including me, that thought there was no need to do a Han Solo film in the first place, which I agree a hundred percent. And I've seen the movie. I like the movie. And I still agree that there's, there was no need for it. You could remove this movie from the pop culture consciousness and nobody would care. You could also remove Last Jedi from the pop culture consciousness and I wouldn't give a shit, but that's totally besides the point. Um, I agree a hundred percent. So when you went into the movie, what were you expecting? Yeah, you, we got exactly what we were going to get. Han Solo has never been a three-dimensional character, okay? Never. He's not in the, you know, up there with Anakin and Obi-Wan and, and Luke and Leia. He's not. The reason why people love Han Solo, at least the reason why I love Han Solo, okay, 
is because he's the most out of all the characters like you and me. Okay, there's always this impression that he's like this regular guy who gets himself into this extraordinary situation, okay, and he relies on his wit, his humor, his charm, luck, you know, all these things to get himself in and out of many different kinds of situations and scenarios. We can relate to that guy because we're like, oh, he's most like us, right? He's not force sensitive. As far as we know, who knows what the hell they're going to do, right? Um, you know, he doesn't use a lightsaber. Yes, I know he used one briefly in The Empire Strikes Back to cut open the Tauntaun and make Luke warm. Okay, don't fuck, you know, they're the hardcore fans. Um, but, but in Empire, he used the light. I know. Um... <laughs> Oh, Lord. Um, and I'm a hardcore fan. I'm making fun of myself here too, guys. Okay, so relax. Um, but yeah, so he was never that kind of character. Listen, if they're going to do an Obi-Wan movie, yes, you expect that movie to be really deep in rich in narrative symbolism, expanding who Obi-Wan was, who he is, how it connects to the, you know, the past and the present. And the, yeah, because it's Obi-Fucking-Wan, arguably the most powerful Jedi who ever lived between Yoda and Luke. So I get it. I get it. Like, that's where you're going to get your Clint Eastwood directed biopic, right? Han Solo? Han Solo's not that guy. Han Solo, th that, that's why we were all like, why are you doing that? Because there wasn't much to tell. Because what we saw in Empire and in Return of the Jedi and in A New Hope and in The Force Awakens was Han Solo. Like, we can sort of already fill in the blanks in our own minds. He wasn't rich enough, okay, in terms of depth that we had to, we, we needed a backstory. No, we can fill that in ourselves. We love him because of, because of Harrison Ford's portrayal, because we love Harrison Ford. Who doesn't like Harrison Ford, right? Um, but we love that what he was able to do with the character and he reminds us, you know, of us. He's that nice balance in this weird, crazy, eccentric world. So, when I went in to see the solo film, I didn't really have any expectations. I I thought The Last Jedi was pretty much a shit show, and I didn't like what they did with it, and I've been sort of in this place of mourning ever since, and when I went in to see Solo, I just was like, okay, yeah, just, okay, I'm, I'm expecting exactly what I got, more or less. But I always knew that ultimately the success or failure of the movie in the big picture, not in the, in the tiny picture um, individually from people who like it or don't like it, but in the overall bigger picture, the success or failure of that movie totally relied on whether we believed on any sort of level that Alden Ehrenreich was a young Han Solo. We believed that Donald Glover was Lando Calrissian. And if we could believe that, if we could look at that and go, yeah, I, I buy this. I buy that that's a 22, 23 year old Han. Yeah, for sure. He's not the more mature Han that he grew into, but I buy, I, I buy that, yeah, okay, yeah, I buy it. I bought it. Totally. The first 10, 15 minutes of the movie, I'm like, yeah, this, this kid's doing a good job. Like, I totally could see this being Han Solo. Not doing a Harrison Ford impression, but I totally could see this being Han Solo. And Donald Glover, oh my God, knocked it out of the park. And I know that there are some that are going to agree with me. When you first hear Donald Glover, uh, talking like Lando. I think he's off screen. I think Han's walking into the, the room where they're gambling. And I think you sort of hear him off screen if memory serves correctly. Um, it sounded like Billy D. Williams. Like it literally, it sounded like Billy D. Williams. I mean, I was like, what? Like that's the first thing I noticed was, whoa, he's got that cadence and that tone down really well. Okay. And, um, yeah, like it, it, he knocked it out of the, I could totally buy that that was, Lando 15, 16 years before Empire. Could totally buy it. And the chemistry between Alden Ehrenreich and Donald Glover as Lando and Han, yeah, I totally buy that this is Han and Lando 15, 16 years before Empire. Totally buy it. When you think of that moment on Empire, or sorry, on Empire, on Bespin, right? When Han comes out of the ship and Lando walks up and he's like, well, you got a lot of guts coming here after what you pulled. Hey, blah, 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 blah. You know, hey, how you doing? Blah. You, you know that there's a history there. You know that there's this love-hate kind of history there, right? Did we need to find out about it? Nope, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, 
But what I saw in Solo, I was like, oh, I totally, like the chemistry was good. I'm, I could totally see it. Could totally believe that these were the two same people. Absolutely. Uh, I thought Chewbacca was great. Um, I had no issues with Woody Harrelson. I had no issues with Amelia Clark. Um, I had no issues with the villain. I mean, some people were like, well, you know, the villain was a little lackluster. You know, he wasn't a really good villain. Like he's not up there with Darth Vader and he's not up there with, you know, all these. Why would he? Of course not. Of course not. People forget the villain in the Han Solo movie is Darth Vader. You're just not seeing him. Okay. He's out there in the ether doing his empire shit. He is the villain in the solo movie. You just don't see him because he's not directly involved with this particular story. So you have this gangster kind of guy. Okay, fine. He served his purpose. Do I wish that Paul Bentney, I think that's his name, right? Paul Bentney? I think that's his name. Um, do I wish he had more to do? Yeah, okay, sure. Because he's such a great actor. He plays the villain really well, right? He's been a villain, you know, in some other films too. So, um, yeah, but at the end of the day, I wasn't expecting a Vader caliber villain or an Emperor caliber villain or even somebody like Kylo Ren. I wasn't expecting that. Vader is the villain in this time period. He's, you know, you're just not seeing him. So, um, so it didn't bother me because I was like, yeah, it doesn't, because it would be very strange if there was this huge, dynamic, evil villain in this movie at the same time period as Darth Vader. Because then you would be like, why doesn't Vader know about this really fucking powerful, evil guy? Like, it doesn't make any sense, of course. So your villain is going to be a little cookie cutter, right? Because the baddie in this universe in this time period, the two baddies are the Emperor and Vader. So they're just doing their thing, right? So it didn't bother me. Like, I got it, okay? Um, but I totally can understand why some fans would be underwhelmed or disappointed. Totally get that. But it never bothered me. I, I, it, it didn't. I enjoyed the movie. For the most part, I enjoyed the film. The third act, I found the movie did kind of end abruptly a little bit for me. I, I thought it ended sort of, I, I wasn't expecting the credits to hit at the moment they did. It, it almost felt like there should have been, um, not necessarily another act, um, but there should have been just something a bit more to make it feel like a little more wrapped up. I did notice that when Ron Howard's name came on the screen, I thought, oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I guess it's done, you know, kind of thing. But at the end of the day, I pretty much got what I expected from a solo Star Wars film. Um, the plot is not very deep. The characters are not, you know, hugely rich and deep. Um, but they're, they're developed enough. The chemistry is there and developed enough that you understand sort of, um, hey, I got to say, I enjoyed Solo better than Rogue One. I wasn't a big fan of Rogue One for the main reason of I wasn't emotionally attached to any of the characters. Now, it's not like the characters in Solo were, um, uh, you know, really well developed, but there was something about the chemistry and something about sort of keeping it simple. There was a simple plot narrative that allowed the justification for simple sort of characters not one dimensional, but maybe 1.5 or two dimensional. Um, I understood sort of what these characters were and like, I got it. Whereas Rogue One, there was more at stake. There was more at stake. The plot was supposed to be richer. The stakes were higher. There was more going on. And yet you had these weak characters and it didn't, it didn't help me. I found it a snooze fest for like three quarters of the movie. Um, if it wasn't for that Darth Vader scene, it, Rogue One, I may have classified as a shit show, but that's just me. That's just me. We don't have to agree, right? We don't have to agree. That's the great thing. We don't have to agree. If you agree with me, I think that's great. If you don't, I couldn't care less. I always hope you agree with me, but if you want to, yeah, thumb down, McCray, thumb down. Knock yourself out. That's why I leave the option there for you guys to do that. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of what I expected was what we got. And I enjoyed the film. It's not going to change the face of Star Wars. It's not what I don't think that's intent. It's not going to change uh, or, or add anything to the Star Wars universe or lore. Uh, and I don't think it's supposed to. But at the same time, it doesn't take anything away either. So it's not like there was anything in Solo where you're like, oh, fuck, they just fucked that up. Like, what the hell? So now when I watch this, that's not going to make any sense. Not at all. Not at all. You could take it or leave it. And I, th that's how a lot of people are sort of feeling. They feel sort of meh about it. And I'm kind of like, well, as I just said, what do you expect? It's a solo origin story. 
and Solo is essentially a two-dimensional character with maybe three-dimensional moments. Three-dimensional moments, but definitely a two-dimensional character, which is one of the reasons, if not the reason, why Harrison Ford wanted Solo to die, because he's more expendable than all the other characters. Not completely expendable like he's just a useless pull, you know, in the background. He knew that the audience loves this, for the most part, two-dimensional character enough that if he were to die, it gives that weight and that bottom that, oh, you know, you kind of feel it, right? You know, it's like, well, and he knew that and Lucas didn't want to do that and that's fine. I mean, as a fan, I'm glad he didn't, but I totally understand from a narrative perspective why that would have been on Harrison Ford's mind. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, but that's why, because Solo doesn't need an intricate, detailed backstory. You just kind of go, okay, it's like this. This is how I'm going to wrap this up. Essentially, for me anyway, Solo, A Star Wars Story was just a little sort of window into the history of Han Solo. And we got to see some cool moments that have always been legend, right? How he met Chewie, the relationship with Lando, uh, the Kessel Run, all that kind of jazz. Just kind of like this, you know, it's like, you know, you're at a party and somebody comes up and he's like, Psst, come here. And you're like, yeah. And they're like, hey, do you want to hear about this? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, oh, you know, I've heard all about this. Tell me about it. Tell, you know, I've heard this and I've heard that. But can you kind of, you know, give me the lowdown? And the guy's like, yeah, okay, so. And you're there and you're like, oh. Oh, cool, cool. Oh, so that's how. Oh, cool. Oh, awesome. Oh, that's neat. Neat. Yeah, cool. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Thanks for showing me that. Yeah, no, no, it's just kind of cool. Yeah, it was kind of cool to see because we've always wondered about it, right? That was kind of cool. Yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, see you later. And you go on with your day. And that's it. Now, for a lot of hardcore Star Wars fans, that's unacceptable. But I find it ironic that you were expecting something deep and rich or more, say more to the plot or some sort of more to the movie with Han when the whole reason why we all thought there shouldn't be a Han Solo movie in the first place is because there really wasn't anything to tell. So if there is going to be a Han Solo origin story, yeah, the focus is probably going to be on those little tidbits that we've always heard about. Han and Chewie meeting, Lando and Han meeting, the Kessel Run, which was fun. So I just see, I saw it as just sort of like a little window, like a flashback. Almost like a flashback, right? Where Han, you know, you know, um, Han is old and he's telling this, you know, story to his grandkid. Well, because he's dead now. But let's say, you know, he's telling this story, right? And we get a flashback into what that was like. And it was kind of cool. Yeah, it was cool. I enjoyed myself. And I thought Alden Ehrenreich and Donald Glover nailed it. If they had not nailed it, the, I wouldn't feel the same way. I wouldn't. Because I'd be so distracted by the fact that this is not Han Solo and that this is not Lando Calrissian, but they nailed it. And their chemistry, n not just individually nailed the roles, but the chemistry between them was like, yeah, I could buy this. So I give it a solid, you know, seven out of 10, something like that. I try not to rate movies because everybody's seven is different from what mine is. And, you know, I mean, we live in a world now where it's either a 10 out of 10 or it's zero. And it's like, no, that's not true. There's many shades of gray. There's many variables. Okay, just because I rate a movie a 7 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10 doesn't mean I didn't like it. Oh, yes, it does. Like, no, no, it doesn't. You know, I give it a solid, yeah, 7, 8 out of 10, something like that. Like, it's not, I didn't, I didn't think it's a great movie, but I, I'll tell you this, I enjoyed it better than Rogue One. I enjoyed it better than The Last Jedi. I think it's the second best Disney era Star Wars film after The Force Awakens. And that's my opinion. If you agree with me, great. If you don't, great. Knock yourself out in the comment section. Anyways, folks, my name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Do you think I'm a Disney shill? Do you think I'm a Disney shill? Comment below and let me know. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> but hey, I totally understand why some people may not like it. I get it, or like it, but feel a little underwhelmed. Totally understand that, totally do. Um, if you want to follow me on Facebook, you can at facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. McRae is M-C-R-A-E, facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. That's where you can follow me in the meantime and in between time when I'm not posting here, that's where I tend to post. And as well, if you want to support this channel via Patreon, you can. I'm new to Patreon. 
Uh, the link is in the description. We're starting to sort of factor this into my day-to-day -day schedule now, um, which is going to be totally awesome. And for you Halloween fans out there, um, level number three on my Patreon, we have 22 people right now. If we can get three more, just three more to 25, I will start doing two live AMAs, Halloween movie-centric live AMAs a month starting next month, just for those who choose level three. Um, and also, I think we have a total of 37 uh, patrons now, if we can get to a total of a hundred, your name will be entered into a draw to win a 12 and a half, a 12 and a half inch replica Lamson Michael Myers knife mine that I used in my most recent fan film, The Shape Attacks, the tiny little one I, I, I uploaded in February. Uh, and it doesn't matter which level you choose, one, two, or three. It doesn't matter. We just have to get to a hundred total and your name will go into a draw. So, uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, the link is in the description. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, comment below and let me know when you guys see Solo, A Star Wars Story, what you thought. Do you agree with me? Are you expecting something sort of rich and intricate and detailed like a Clint Eastwood biopic? Or are you just, are you like me? It's just like, yeah, it was fun. It was great. It was simple and surface level, but it was, it was Han. It's, yeah, it's what I expect from a Han Solo movie. Yeah, comment below and let me know. I will talk to you guys soon. Cheers. Cheers.